Welcome back Kaiju fans, today we're going to be going over the first Godzilla trailer and we are going to be taking a look at some moments that you might have missed some things um, stuff that might not be entirely clear or just some cool shots here so it's just going to be a little bit of a breakdown and to start out we have the opening scene in the trailer with Millie Bobby Brown's character standing on a roof and as we can see behind her is the rolling in of a thunderstorm type uh, effect it's it's very violent it's very fast uh, this is the one behind her and there is a high concentration of yellow lightning that's following with it so we can infer from this is that the monster bringing the storm behind her is going to be Ghidorah with his powerful lightning storm creation effect that he has wherever he goes so this is the monster that's coming in behind Millie Bobby Brown's character it's going to be Ghidorah Moving on from there, we get a glimpse of a monarch submarine traveling through a sunken ancient city. This is really cool because we haven't seen anything like this yet in the universe. It's just a massive structure, a massive ancient temple, what appears to be just completely buried in water. And the, the monarch submarine is just kind of exploring this area. And then moving on from there, we can actually see that this monarch submarine passes a giant ancient mural of a civilization that is worshipping Godzilla. So we can imply that this is some kind of lost civilization that used to worship Godzilla as a higher being. I wonder if this is going to be some kind of like weird Atlantis reference that might get thrown into this film and um, imply that this is Godzilla's home. This is where he stays underwater because moving on from that shot we see that this is probably the same monarch submarine it runs into Godzilla and one of the interesting changes that we've been able to see so far about Godzilla is that he appears to be using his atomic powers very frequently throughout this trailer so in this moment his spines are already lit up blue and he's just hovering in front of this monarch submarine almost as if he was expecting them to show up there and then his eyes are also glowing blue a lot in this, and that's not something that we really saw a lot in the first, uh, the 2014 film, but that appears to be happening quite a bit throughout this trailer, is Godzilla's eyes really glow blue anytime something is going on, so they kind of just run into Godzilla here, and we get to see that effect for the first time. If you really didn't notice it, you're probably going to notice it every time you watch the trailer from now on, is just how much Godzilla's eyes are blue. Moving on from there, we get to see the monarch base housing the frozen King Ghidorah. Within this picture, we can see all three of his heads, one in the middle, one in the bottom left, and one on the right. What appears to be a claw on the right near the top, and then we can see in the background his tails curling up towards the top. Definitely a cool shot. We don't really know that much about Ghidorah quite yet just that he is frozen here in this base and at some point he's going to get released so we, it's definitely interesting to see this large um, construction site monitoring Ghidorah built so perfectly on the Chi device it kinda makes you wonder how why was the Chi device so flat on this side of it in particular for them to be able to build this structure up around it but definitely a cool shot we get to kinda see some people working around the area on to the next part of the trailer that seemed to be the most interesting. This is, it appears to be some kind of Mothra uh, chrysalis or cocoon or pod. It, it, it looks really small in comparison to a lot of the other stuff because we can see a cast of characters walking up to it and they appear to be pretty large in comparison to this. So it's kind of weird to see that this is, this seems to be really small compared to a lot of the other monsters in this. So maybe, maybe Mothra grows a significant amount once it comes out of this uh, cocoon or chrysalis. We don't know if it's going to come out of this into the larva form or if it goes straight into the full moth form from this. Um, that is something that we will have to wait and see later on. Next we get our first good look at the new spine design for Godzilla. They change these from the first film, they're no longer just triangles with pieces cut out to them, making them look like Godzilla spines, they're actually more of a traditional, um, multi-directional, broken up into weird shapes, and uh, for some reason people have a problem with this, I think it's cool, I think that gives this Godzilla a little more character, it makes them look more like Godzilla instead of just a giant dinosaur with Godzilla spines attached, so I like this change right here. 
And then this next picture is a continuation of the last shot. We just get to see a better picture or better image of Godzilla emerging from the water with his new spines. You can see that these are definitely different spines than the 2014 film. I dig it a lot. Godzilla just pulling himself out of the water, looking pretty intimidating, I'm not going to lie. So I'm kind of interested to see why why is Monarch right here up on Godzilla in this exact moment? What are they doing? What do they plan on doing here? Next, this is probably just another continuation of that same shot, and we get to see Godzilla's eyes glowing blue yet again. This is when he's about to use his breath and unleash it up into the sky. And really, the eyes glowing blue appears to be a common reoccurring theme. Happens every time Godzilla's going to use any of his abilities. His spines are glowing with the new pattern that got added to them. Just an overall awesome picture. Next, we get to see the shot of Mothra emerging, and we can see the size difference between this image and the previous image of what is supposedly Mothra. Here we can see like bases and buildings and structures underneath these wings, which appear to be tiny compared to how massive Mothra actually is. So it's a hard comparison before with that little chrysalis that the people walking up to it were pretty big in comparison to. Now, Mothra is huge. And we get a look at Mothra's bioluminescent wings, they're glowing blues and greens. Don't know if that's gonna be Mothra's new color palette, if it's gonna be transparent and blue and green uh, for the bioluminescence. And down in the middle there where the wings are coming out, they're trying to hide much as much of Mothra and the other kaiju in this trailer as they can, not to reveal too much, but we can see two glowing blue eyes. So we know that Mothra's eyes are going to be blue from this image. Up next, we see Rodan emerging from the volcano in Io Dalmona, covered in lava, creating massive clouds. And I can only imagine this volcano is now just erupting due to this, especially since the top of the volcano does appear to be blown off later on in the trailer. We can just see Rodan awaken from his slumber and getting ready to fly off. Next, we see Rodan's massive destruction he causes just simply by flying, taking back, paying homage to Rodan's abilities of just being able to level cities by flying over them. We can see anything behind Rodan's shadow is immediately leveled to the ground, completely destroyed. So Rodan does have a lot of destructive capabilities coming up in this film. Next, we are back at the Monarch base housing King Ghidorah, and we get to the first look at Ghidorah unleashing his gravity beam inside of this base just completely destroying everything on the inside shooting out of all the doors and windows it's possible awesome attack definitely love the way that they're handling the gravity beams and they seem to be pretty accurate in this film this next shot not a lot enough people are talking about I don't know if they're just not seeing what's going on here but this is probably near the end of the film right winding down to the final battle everything is just completely destroyed King Ghidorah's massive thunderstorm is in the background, multiple tornadoes, lightning everywhere, and that is Rodan in that cloud flying into some battle. We don't know if he's going to battle with Ghidorah or if he's being some kind of vanguard protecting Ghidorah from when Mothra and Rodan show up, but the military is just hammering on Rodan, shooting everything that they can at him, and this area is just completely destroyed from that storm and Rodan being near it. Next, we have an incredible shot of Millie Bobby Brown's character with this Ghidorah head looking in the window behind her. We can assume this is probably right after uh, Ghidorah wakes up in the Monarch base and Millie Bobby Brown is horrified. This is such a brief image in the trailer that I don't think a lot of people really caught onto this, but this is indeed King Ghidorah looking in, we can see his main head right here, we can see the one of probably his left head over there on that right side of the screen, and we get to see a lot of face detail down to his eyes being red, really reminding me of that Kaiser Ghidorah from the end of Godzilla Final Wars, which is the beady red eyes, so definitely an incredible shot. Ghidorah is looking very good. I'm very happy with the way they're taking this and just an incredible shot that a lot of people didn't really pay too much attention to because of how brief it is in the trailer. Next we have another shot of Rodan just causing havoc with the military, knocking jets out of the sky and we get a good look at Rodan's feet and legs. Um, this is such a quick shot that everything is kind of blurry with it so I apologize for that but we get to see how scaly Rodan is in this. These are like built up like plates. We know that the lava built up on Rodan and it kind of gave him like layered armor, but it definitely, you can definitely tell that they're going with that because 
that's a lot of bumps. Here's another shot of Rodan flying into what appears to be one of Ghidorah's storms. Uh, Rodan is still on fire or still covered in lava from awakening in the volcano. I'm curious as to how long this is going to last. He didn't appear to have that going on when he, in one of the previous shots when he was flying towards Ghidorah's storm before, but he still has it going on here. We can see some of Ghidorah's lightning in the center of the storm. More tornadoes. Ghidorah is the most overpowered thing in the world, apparently, but I'm fine with that. But this Rodan shot's definitely cool. He then touches his wings in the water, kind of giving it a gliding effect. I should probably put out the uh, fire on him. Now we have a reveal of King Ghidorah's silhouette, almost mirroring the image that we got at the end of Kong Skull Island. This is an incredible shot. We get to see just how big of a wingspan this Ghidorah is going to have in comparison to the size of his heads. We still haven't had a good look at his body, legs, or tails yet, minus the brief glimpses of those in the ice shot from earlier, but this is just such a menacing and scary shot. I'm sure that this is probably near the end of the film, Ghidorah just revealing himself to Godzilla, getting ready to do their final battle. This next shot's very interesting. This is where the line, Long Live the King, comes into the trailer. We have Charles Dance's character with the character that is playing Millie Bobby Brown's mother in this film, uh, supposed to be a monarch scientist able to communicate with the kaiju. We understand that Charles Dance is probably the leader of the eco-terrorist group and that Via Formiga is potentially going on the side of the eco-terrorist group, leaving Monarch trying to begin the end of the world via the kaiju to quote-unquote save it. So we can probably imply this is past the point where she leaves Monarch and when she joins the eco-terrorist group trying to control the kaiju for nefarious reasons. Here's another shot of Rodan fighting those jets, probably the same scene as before, potentially right before or afterwards, but we get Rodan, a glimpse of Rodan's head. It looks really fox-like in this shot. It's probably just because of the way it's blurred from the speed of the shot, but Rodan definitely looking cool, very powerful. He claps his wings together and flies straight up in the air very fast. I think they did Rodan a lot of justice in this trailer, and the film is probably going to be incredible. Rodan seems to be a bit more powerful than he used to be and a little bit more interesting than he used to be. These next two shots are of Mothra's new ability, the bioluminescence god rays, just making a blinding amount of light. Just so much. It's as bright as the sun. This is insane. Definitely a new ability for Mothra. We've seen stuff like the scales in the past, but this is just something completely different. Mothra is just hammering down this light, and I don't know what the practicality of this is. If it's going to do damage to any kaiju, if it gets concentrated into some actual kind of like beam, they got called god rays, so if they can actually be focused and used as a weapon, that would be pretty intense, but as of right now, we can just see that Mothra is using it to blind people. And here we're coming to the end of the trailer. This is Godzilla walking onto land with that fighter jet squadron behind him. We don't know if that means that Godzilla now has the support of the military to fight the other kaiju or what's going on here, but we do get a very good look at the new Godzilla design, which if you haven't been able to tell this by now, you probably won't be able to unsee it. But this Godzilla is so swole, like he's so buffed up compared to the 2014 film where he had just like flat flush scales on his arms and his shoulders really weren't that prominent, his forearms really weren't that prominent, but we can now see from the end of this trailer his shoulders are jacked out, his forearms are huge, this Godzilla has been doing some heavy lifting. So we got the spine change, the tail is now shorter, and his arms are massive and buffed up so definitely an interesting change um, he'll be able to throw some more punches I guess but that's kind of the main thing that sticks out from this image um, this is where he roars and they get cut to the title card Godzilla King of the Monsters so that's it for the trailer that's my breakdown that's everything that I thought was important uh, maybe some of you guys missed that stuff but that's all stuff to look out for. Next time you watch the trailer, you won't be able to unsee Godzilla's eyes glowing all the time. You won't be able to unsee him being so jacked up. So that's going to be it, guys. Let me know what you guys thought, if you saw any of this stuff, if there's anything else that I should go back and take a look at. But I will catch you next video. Peace out.